So hello everyone and welcome to the new episode where we are going to learn how to connect React with Firebase. So without further ado, let's start building our application. But first of all, we need to create some Google account. You have to have Google account. If you don't have, you should go to, for example, Gmail, create one and then go to firebase.google.com and we were going to start building our Firebase application from that. But to do that, we need to initialize our project and we need to go to the console over there, then add project, create a new project. For example, it will be even YouTube or we will just create some kind of event YouTube. We will going to continue. We don't need analytics. You can stick it with it and I will stick with it, but you can just make it disabled. Okay. Then continue. Select the account. So default account for Firebase will be perfect. And after all, we need to cl click create project. And right now we have to wait a few minutes or minutes to initialize our project. In the meantime, as I mentioned before, we are going to create the project inside the React application. So npx create React app inside the folder that we are in and that because we are going to initialize our Firebase project inside that folder. Okay. So right now we are waiting till it will be done and going back to our console with Firebase when our fire, when our React application is preparing. Okay. After you create your Firebase project, we need to create a few things. First of all, we need to get started by adding Firebase to our application. And we need to click up, we'll pick some name. In our case, we'll just storage or something like that. So we can also set up the Firebase hosting so it can host your application as well. But we are not going to dive that in that episode. If you would like to know more about Firebase hosting, just leave a comment and I will just show you how you can create application with some hosting, but it's up to you. And then we click register app. And of course, as always, we need to wait a few seconds when it's going to just create the application. And whenever our application is ready, we'll just see that we've got the a Firebase SDK that later on will need us to set up our Firebase config inside our application. First of all, we need to install Firebase. So just copy it. Going back inside our application, our React application is ready. Just paste it and npm install Firebase. Wait a few seconds. And right there, we can copy all of that file later on will change some places to create our Firebase config. So going back to our application, remember to copy that initialized Firebase project. And here inside source folder, we can, for example, create some kind of like Firebase config.js. Here we are going to paste it. Of course, we don't need analytics for that manner. So we are going to just delete it. And the only thing that we'll need also there, because we are going to create some kind of very simple CURT application using Firebase, we are going to import get fire store from we'll go fire oh Firebase slash fire store. Okay. And also we need to import it, export 
export command cast firestore export now it's okay get firestore and right now we need our application so that's all that we need to make a config remember that's very that create the credential is very vulnerable so whenever you are writing that application to the github or something like that you should use the .env file but we will just skip that part over there because i would like to show you the essential essence of that application so without further ado we need to create our crude application and to work to make it work to make it happen we need a new folder file oh sorry file like firebase service the naming convention is up to you i prefer in that manner to stick with that one but whenever we going to use our firebase fire storage we need to go back to our website and here continue to the console inside we've got build and inside that build we've got firebase database and here we wait a few seconds and create database because we need to create that wait also a few seconds we can just choose the location you cannot change it is very important in my case it will be europe you can use for example united states taiwan hong kong it's up to you there are a lot a lot of places and whenever it's ready we just click next we'll just stay with the test mode so it will be like in the 30 days long only with this very pure security rules but in our case whenever we are starting learning it's the best way so whenever we choose the test mode we click enable and our fire storage is going to be prepared and right now we can just write down the application whenever our fire store is creating so first of all we need to import fire store from that firebase.config so we are going to get that one then we need to import some file something like collection also we need get documents add documents update document also we need to delete document and we need document from firebase slash firestore and that's awesome we've got our collections done because whenever our application is starting we are going to create some kind of collection which will just have some documents and our document will be will be able to read from there and first of all whenever we create the crude operation is c for create so i will write down to like something like that and we'll just export it to be able to create very easy and good looking application later on so cast add item equals async and here we'll just need only an item we will need to return that's how easy it is for you to create the oh and just make a typo here it's easy to create the adding items to the documents inside firebase so you need only await because it's asynchronous operation and add document and here collection reference and we pass item that's all that you need you don't need anything more so that's easy read for r in our site our crud export const get all items and we need async of course it as well and here to get the documents we need first of all create some 
thing called snapshot. And with that snapshot, we'll just map through it and show the user all of the things that are inside our storage. And to make it happen, to make it work, it's very easy. So const snapshot. And here we need await, get documents, and here collection reference. With that, we've got also almost everything. And we need to return snapshot. And then we go to the documents and we map through the document. And each document will parse like ID, copy document.id. And the last thing that we need, document, that data. That's all that we need from our read operation. Whenever we are talking about CRU, so you update. So we need to const update item. And we need also it asynchronously. We need two parameters to pass. Okay. Const over there. We need two parameters. So first of all, as always, we need ID and updated item. Updated item. So first of all, we need to know which item we are going to update, what we are going to update. So cast item document. So we need document to create it in Firestore. That's the first thing, as you can see here, the path, the string. So it's called items because we, oh, I just don't create the reference. So const collection reference and collection here because we need to the path to our name to our Firestore and it is Firestore and we need to alt it, for example, items whenever we are going to reference right there to that. So the need also ID and we need to just update document. That's why we are going to need to collect, to get it from Firebase Firestore. And here, as you can see, first of all, we need to get the reference, which we created. So it's item doc, and we need the updated item to pass what we are going to update. And that's all that we need to update our item with the Firebase. So as you can see, till that moment, it's very easy. And the last thing, so sorry. Oh, come on. In delete, it, it goes to T and export cast, delete item. Asynchronously, we need only ID to delete the item. And here, first of all, we need that document which we are going to delete. So as before, we are going to find it in the same, same manner. Whenever we've got our document, we will return await delete document and we'll pass item doc. And that's all that we need inside our configuration. Whenever we are going to start our part inside the app.js, first of all, we'll just go change the app CSS. You will have that app CSS available in the links below the video and you can copy and paste and everything will work as it should. So going back to our update JS, here we are going to make some magic. First of all, we don't need anything from that. And we need to need logo as well. We only need, okay, app CSS is essential and we need it. We need use state and use effect from React. Also, we need, oh, come on, import add item. We need also get all, oh, it will be easier for me. Get all, I, get all items, items. Also, we need update item and delete item 
from our Firebase service, so that file that we recently created. Rolling back there, we need to return something because I do not like whenever the error is appearing. We need to create our application. And it's quite simple because first of all, we need to save to handle our items. And we need item, items, because there will be more than one set, set items. And here we are going to get use state with empty array inside of it. Then we need a new item and set new item. So whenever we are creating a new item and use state, we will need to pass the object like, oh, come on, name, which will be empty. And also we need description, description, which will also be empty at the very first time. Because I would like to show you how you can create not only single object, like single input, but all object, how to pass it to the Firebase. And then const edit item, set edit item and use state will pass it as no because right now we don't need anything like that. Okay, so whenever we start our create play operation, we are going to create, first of all, the R. So get all of the items. Use effect because each time it will be reloaded, we need to fire whenever we add something to our website. So here we are going to cost fetch data because we are going to fetch a sync and then we only need const data, await, get all items and set items as data. Then after all, we need fetch data and as an argument, empty array, that's all that we need to fetch our data and to get that data. Then we need to handle our first operation. So it will be the easiest one in our manner. So it will be cost, handle, add item. Also we need async, oh come on, async function. And here we will await, await. And here we will add item, as new item, which will be passed here. And then we will set new item to the empty value. So we can copy that case here. And after that, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to refresh our data because we need to fire up. And so first of all, we're just going to create refresh items because that items also async operation count data await get all items and of course set items as items as, as data as we done here so we are going to pass it there and the last thing that we need is refresh items right there and that's all that we need to handle our adding things. The next thing that we need to, because we've got adding, we need updating. So handle, handle update item, async function, and there we are going to handle our update. Await update item, which we created recently in our Firebase service. Edit item, and that ID, that's the thing that we need. And then we pass name as edit item as name. And also description, description. It equals edit item, that description. And with that, we set edit item to null because we don't need it. And then we'll just refresh if anything go wrong. Okay, so we've got our add 
update and we have the handle the delete item equals async and we need to pass id and there await delete item and we need to pass id over there then of course refresh everything that we need so that's all whenever we are talking about the logic of our application because right now we need to focus about hmm, how to call it maybe more the front-end part whatever we are going to see so first of all there we need to create div item with class name which will be app container from the app css here also we are going to close the div and start to creating our little magic first of all what we need is to create the div last name form group and it will be available to add items to our database and we need oh come on input type type will be text last name will be of input field i will just close it value will be new item that name on change it will be okay it will be e because we need to get the value from that input set new item we need to just flash our items and the name will be target value why we need that because whenever we are going to change the description later on we need to st stand and stay the name this description in the position and the value that correctly has that set new value whenever we are changing something inside the description the roles will be different and whenever we've got that thing we need to create some kind of placeholder with for example name okay and we need another input here we'll just change something so new item description and we need blah 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 blah, blah, blah description over there and also a placeholder rule to description to stand it as it was okay so we've got our input our div and there we need the button button class name equal button so on click equal handle at item so as you see our items are available and then we are going to make name it at item and with that we are going to be able to add items and to show you npm run wait a few seconds okay blah blah blah, blah. npm npm start so that's what we need we need to wait a few seconds whenever our application start to run just wait okay 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 and we've got some error but at the meantime you can see that there's something working and we've got the document reference expected type document reference but it has the collection reference so whenever we are going back there we can chain check if everything work as it should so we've got our collection of reference over there okay okay so we are going to get the collection then fire store then items we passing the collection 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 
Okay, also I will check if everything working inside our database. So whenever our your console your application will be ready, it will show you something like that. And with our manner, we are going to add item. We need the collection reference, which is collect correct. Sorry. And add item. And that's the thing that we need. Okay, we'll just see what the REST application will show you because I see that everything is correct. Maybe we've got some error over there. Handle, set new item, add new item. And I rerun the application. That's the case. And right now we can create create some name, create a, create some description, add item, it's deleted. And the only thing that we need to check also is our Firebase storage. So whenever we add something to our storage, as you can see, it's working as it should. So we've got our description and name working there. Okay. Going back to our application, we need to add the next item from the app. So we are going to get through the items, map that, and through the item, we are going to return. So implicit return with only parentheses. Here we are going to create the class name of item, which will be div and item.id will be the key. Okay, tell me what's your problem. Okay. We need to map through. You've got the item, we've got... That's your problem. We don't have that div. Okay, so we've got our div and right now we need to check if we've got our possible to change the item. So we need to check if the item ID is edit item ID is equal to item ID. Whenever we check that, we knew that we can edit it and then we can also, for example, whenever we would like to have not only edit, but also delete. So, uh, so I mean, whenever we click the edit, it will fire up and we will have that item edit. And then we check whenever the item ID equals the edit item ID. So edit item and edit item.id equal item.id and there we need to create div also close that div and we'll just create the div over there because I don't know don't want to have any errors and here we are going to create the input so we can copy that input paste it we don't need that class name the value will check not new item but edit item right now and here we are going to set edit item and instead of new item we need edit item over there because we stand with the thing like that over there we don't need placeholder either so with that we need to create the second one so we need to copy and we've got our type input text, sorry, edit that description. And here we need to change the description over there. And we are ready to go with the button. So right now we need button on click, which will handle update item, which will 
to allow us to update everything. And of course, we need to update on click equals oh, parentheses. And there we are going to set edit item. Oh, come on. Item with no. And we're gonna do console whenever we don't want to update it anymore. And with that, we created our all update logic and we can make it work. But whenever we would like to call that update mode logic, we need first of all to create how we would like to show our item name and item description. I will stick with the very, very easy way. So it will be item name dash item description. And here we need to, two buttons. First is on click, which will trigger our set edit item to the item. So it will not be in a new and it will be available inside the ID. And then we know that it's the same ID, which we triggered. And that's why we are able to change everything. So it will be our edit. Also, we need button on click and we need the handle delete command delete item <laughs> with item.id and we need only delete over there. And that's the whole logic that we need. And right now, as you can see, we don't have any errors running over there. So we are going back to our application. New one, inscription, another. We need to add item. We can change it. Created a new one. Another descriptions. We need to click update. As you can see, everything works as it should. And whenever we delete, it delete as it should. So that's all for that episode. I hope you enjoy. If you enjoy, leave a like, leave a subscription, do whatever you would like to, and stay with me with the further application. Whenever you would like to have um, more videos about fire storage, Firebase, React, or something like that, leave a description, write me a message, whatever. Have a good day. Bye.